Hi and thanks for joining me again and this is the uh, system layout chapter. Okay in this particular chapter what we're going to do is we're going to take a look inside the box at what actually comes whenever you buy um, Flow 636. Um, also I'm going to take you through what tools you're going to need. Now you're really not going to need many but it just gives you a little chance to make a list of any that you may need. Also in this particular section, I want to show you uh, the layout of the water system infrastructure. And we're going to look at a very simple, straightforward one that you would find in a touring caravan, uh, an RV or a boat, either using a tank outside or indeed using an onboard fresh water tank. And then we're going to have a look at something just a little more complicated because this does happen where people have a tank outside that they use, but they also have an onboard tank. So it's how we go about uh, fitting to that. Uh, in this chapter also what I want to look at is the airline connections of how we're actually going to fit flow to the water infrastructure and in what position and using things like check valves, one way valves and so on. Um, also to use flow we need to bring DC power to it um, so we're going to have a look at that as well. So first things first what we need to do is have a look what's in the box. Okay, so just to start off with, I thought I would show you um, exactly what's in the box whenever you buy uh, Flow 636. Okay, well, we'll just start off with the unit itself. Um, so we have the Flow unit. Inside here is a very clever compressor and all its uh, aim in life is to uh, reach 15 PSI and push uh, that compressed air uh, through your system and push the water out of your outlets. Now, just to give you uh, an idea around the box itself, it's a fire retardant casing, okay, and on the side here you will see vents. This is to draw air in so that the, cre the compressor can actually build up that uh, pressure. Okay, we have our on off switch at the top. There are no gauges to watch. Like I said, the compressor will build up to 15 psi. That's its only job in life. And whenever you open a tap or an outlet of some sort, what will happen is, is it will sense that the pressure is going to drop because the pressure is like a, con uh, a coiled spring and it's going to, to be pushing against the tap. Now, we're working at 15 PSI. What you'll find is that pumps that operate on, on any of those types of uh, properties, that they will all the pump will operate at 20 PSI. So we're operating pressure-wise under that. So your pipes, your joints, your pumps, uh, and so on and so forth are, are, are all uh, safe there. Okay, and, and as I say, there's no gauges to watch, so it will just automatically get to 15 PSI. When it drops by a half a PSI, it will instantly um, recognize that the pressure has dropped when you open an outlet, and it will restart again, okay? Okay, so we move down to the bottom. What you'll find here is you've got a connection for um, to get a 12 volt DC power uh, into that, and I'll cover the components for that in a second. And what you'll find is this black tube sticking out of the bottom. This is your airline, okay? So there are three distinct um, parts uh, to flow, really. There's the flow unit itself, there is the electricity supply, and indeed the, the airline supply as well. Just to show you how, uh, for fitting wise, um, there's a little bag of components and what you get is four uh, little screws, four little uh, retainer um, caps here, and four uh, anti-vibration washers. Now, as I said, so that you can connect it, if you wanted your airline to come straight down the wall, what you can do is just use the straight connector. If you're going to mount it down low underneath the seats or in a cupboard, instead of trying to bend, you know, put on a connection and try and bend the pipe, what we've done is given you this elbow and this stops the pipe from kinking. Okay, so you have both options there. You have your four meters um, of pipework and then um, at the end of the other end of the pipework, what you want to be doing is connecting to the water system. And that's by using this little T here. And what that does is it allows the air to come down through here, okay, and into the tea and obviously push the water out. But it doesn't allow any water on an everyday use. It, the water will just travel past, but the water does not have any way of going back up through that 10 millimeter check valve. Now, this particular T is designed for use with these kind of semi-rigid pipes. They're, you know, rigid when you try to make a circle with them, and you'll see that later on. And they are just push fit. You simply just push them in, okay? And then to release them again, okay, you just release the little, ta um, little toggles here, pull them back, just like any push fit connection, and you can release them again. Now, it's in the UK particularly it's not very common but a lot of European vans or, or RVs and so on what they have is 
this particular type of pipework here. It's more reminiscent of garden hose. It's this uh, quite flexible hosing. Now what you'll find is that it won't push fit for a start. So what we've done is to allow for that we have given you these little barbed connectors as we would call them. You will find that one end is actually the barb is quite sharp and the other end is quite straight. Simply what you do is the straight end is 12 millimeter again Again, it's push fit, just pushes in nice and uh, easy. What you want to do then is take this particular piece of hose, put it into some boiling water so it becomes soft, and then push it in, let it sit. Once it um, cools down and hardens, it should really grip quite hard um, onto that barb. Okay, so that's the barbs uh, and the T connected. Now, one thing you may need in here is this one-way valve. Basically, what this does, again, it allows one-way traffic. So that's the one-way valve uh, and the T. So that's the airline taken care of. The next thing we need to do is obviously get power to the box itself. And this is 12 volt DC power. So what we have here, first of all, this isn't a very long connection as you can appreciate. So what again we've done is we've given you this uh, four meters of DC cable. It's got a male and female end. You can't go wrong here really. This is uh, your female end on the end of the cable is the male you just simply snap those together uh, and you're good to go what you will find at the end of this cable is this fuse now the main breaker fuse the main fuse for your property you'll find is probably about 20 amp okay this box uses about at its when it's just starting up it uses about 10 and a half amp so what we've done is we've put a 15 amp fuse in there that if something were to happen um, and it was going to fuse what it will do is it will pop the 15 amp fuse and not pop the main 20 amp fuse now so no matter what you do if you're trying to fit flow and you're just wanting to keep it neat what i would su very strongly suggest is you've you know if you do feel you have to cut this cable for any reason make sure you keep this 15 amp fuse being used okay because very very important because that is uh what will what will pop first if the fuse were to go now if you do have the cable unraveled and so on what i would suggest with the little cable tie here is try not to cut the cable because what you're going to want to do is take um, perhaps if you change your, your property you're going to want to take flow with you and you can do that because we're going to show you a way here where you can install flow and then remove it again and it's as if it was never there with the other end of the four meter cable um, at this end you will find that it needs to get access to the power in the actual property and that's where this little T comes in we're going to show you that we've created this T and we're going to kind of piggyback if you will off the main electrics now you will notice here that the um, cable is actually significantly thicker than this cable here now what we also have here is a little inline switch what you'll find is a lot of vehicles like this that space is a premium and as I say, you may wish to fit flow up underneath a bulkhead somewhere, somewhere out of the way, um, and indeed somewhere where you're going to be able to still get some fresh air. It's great if you can find a little vent somewhere um, that, that's continually drawing fresh air in. However, um, what you'll find is that it can be quite awkward if you put it somewhere um, out of the way to get access to this on-off and convenience is everything uh, with flow. That's the whole purpose of this box, to make draining down very, very simplistic. So what we've done is we've given you this inline switch and then it means that you can put this switch in a very convenient location. You just open a door or a drawer and press click and the box. That would mean leaving the box in the on position. Now, by the way, we've um, made sure that there is no, because that's that's gonna be cutting the power completely, um, that it is not, while it's sitting idle, drawing power um, from your battery. Okay, so that's the three parts. You've got the box, the airline and connections and the electrical connections. What you have also here is your DVD. Um, now, of course, DVDs inside there, but what you'll also have is your uh, user manual and it has some warnings and advice in there. Please read this uh, information. It is very important. What you also have is your warranty registration card. We need you to um, go online and register your product and that takes advantage of your five year uh, warranty scheme. And we will have other information um, coming your way, such as we, we run a, a customer incentive scheme. So if you recommend a box to someone else, um, then it means that they get a discount and in fact 
um, you get a little bit of an incentive um, for doing so and a thank you from us. Um, you are also entitled now by using uh, Flow 636 to uh, an insurance discount, a reduction in your insurance premiums. Um, and so information will come your way, uh, website and so on, to give you contact telephone numbers for those uh, insurance brokers, affiliates that we're, that we're currently working with. Okay, you may wonder, finally, what this little, what you would call a face cloth maybe, just a little tile, okay, just with our Flow um, web address on it. And what that's for simply is whenever you do carry out a drain down later on, what you would want to do You'll find that when the water is pushed out of the taps, at the very end there is like a spurt. And that's the last of the water coming out followed by the air. Now that spurt can come out and hit the bottom of a sink, for example, and actually end up around you. So what we do is we simply just wet it first of all, and then just dress it around the actual um, tap itself. And you'll see it during the drain down later on. Dress it around the tap, open the tap, and when you get that large spurt, this will um, uh, uh, absorb any water that splashes out. So that's it, so that's everything that's in the box. What I want to do now is just show you uh, what, what tools you will need uh, for fitting flow. Okay, so you're gonna want to fit flow, so you're gonna need a few tools. Now you're really not gonna need very many here. And there are three distinct areas um, that you will need tools for. The first one really um, is for fitting flow itself. And what I have here, as you can see, you've got your fitting tabs at the top. And what I would use is a bradle, just to get a bit of a point in there. If you don't have a bradle, a sharp edge, a sharp end there, what I would use is the sharp end of a long screw or indeed a very fine star head screwdriver just to make a bit of a mark. And you might find that it's enough just to get a screw in because it can be quite awkward and uh, cramped in these places just to get a couple of threads through. What you'll also need is this um, Phillips head screwdriver, uh, obviously for the star head or, or Phillips head screws that we'll be putting in here as well. That brings us on, so that's fitting the box, that brings us on to fitting the airline. You'll notice a couple of different alternatives here, you're a few alternatives, you've got a pair of pipe cutters, you've got a pair of sharp secateurs, all will do the same thing and a pair of large, say, carpet scissors, or just large um, scissors. Then it brings us on to fitting the electrics itself. Now, if you do fit the little inline switch, what you may need is a pair of little wire trimmers, um, and what that will do is just, you know, pull the end of the, the cable off. Uh, a little uh, knife, a little Stanley knife will do exactly the same thing. But that's the only thing really you would need to do for the electric side of things. Again, just for, for snipping the little wire, if you for the switch, if you do have them, a uh, little pair of wire snippers. As little incidentals, um, whenever you do cut through into the water system, make sure your pump is switched off. As a matter of fact, when you're working at your electrics and so on, use a torch um, or a head torch even better. So make sure you turn the power off uh, to the property, but also turn off the, the, the pump to the water. When you cut through, uh, sometimes through the water pipe, the pump may sense that you have opened a tap and it may start to push water. And so things can get pretty wet. However, um, water may be lying in a particular pipe and when you cut through it you're just going to get water coming out anyway so a piece of this blue roll or indeed a cloth um, will do the same thing just to mop up that excess water uh, and as I say a torch or a head torch will do the same thing and that's it that's really all you need to do to fit flow Okay, so something that's very important for the fitting of flow is obviously we need to take a look at the infrastructure of the water system so that we can connect flow up. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a touring caravan, if it's a motorhome or RV, or indeed it's a boat. Um, there will be similarities. The infrastructure itself, when you look at it, will probably look completely different. However, um, there will be uh, similarities to an actual home. Um, and I want to just show you here in a diagram um, what those similarities are um, and then I'll show you some of the little differences that can be in there. Now, okay, so basically water comes into a property or a vehicle or a boat, okay? And what it will do, if you've got hot and cold running water, what it will do is it will branch into two. The top branch, say, will go off to, let's call it the uh, kitchen cold tap. We'll move over to the um, wash hand basin okay in the bathroom then it would go to the shower okay and indeed if you do have a toilet that it, it draws its water from the mains uh, system here that will be on at uh, this circuit as well now the lower branch 
will travel forward where it then goes into the water heater. And the water heater heats the water obviously, moves on and goes to the kitchen, to the wash hand basin and to the shower and obviously doesn't go on to the toilet. Now, that's the same system for any of those types of properties um, and indeed um, lodges, uh, holiday homes, houses and so on. They all pretty much follow uh, those same principles if they are fed from a single mains cold uh, pipe. Now, how do we get the water into this pipe? Well, there's um, two simple solutions which is there in the case of a caravan for example, most caravans will have a wall here okay with a pipe stops at a wall and then you will have a little barrel outside and that barrel has a, uh, a connector which goes into the wall and obviously the water travels through there okay so you have that particular type of connection then you have the other type of connection which is an onboard tank in the case of a motorhome or indeed a boat okay and so what happens there if I just take this away what you'll find is that you have a tank like this, you've got your water connection uh, and then you've got a, um, uh, an overflow pipe and so on. Now, okay, let's have a, a chat about pumps for uh, a moment. In, and I'll just draw another one in here as well, which is the wall with the little tank, etc. that feeds into the wall and indeed does the same thing. If you have a pump, what you may have is a pump here, which would be on board, okay, or indeed on board here. So you have onboard pumps and then you have what's known as submersible pumps, okay? And these obviously are just in here, you will find in a tank or indeed in the barrel outside, they will be exactly the same thing. They will draw water up into the system. For this particular diagram, I'm gonna put in an onboard pump, just for this example. We have to ask ourselves, right, where do we want to, to put flow? Now, what we're trying to do here is get to the very source of the water, where it comes from. Either it comes from a tank or it comes from um, the wall, if you will, for the, the, the barrel outside. And we want to be able to get this water from this source and push it all out in that direction. Um, going through the kitchen, the wash hand basin taps, the, the um, shower and the toilets and so on, and drain all of those down. Not only that, obviously to protect for frost, but not only that, we want it to be able to, um, to clean the system as well. What we want to do is we have our T here. Now you can see a couple of bits of pipe sticking out. And what we want to do is have that fitted onto the system here. And the best thing we can do is fit it as close to the source of the water itself and there's flow and then what's going to happen is flow is going to build up pressure it's going to push that water in this direction but there is a slight problem sometimes what you'll find is in, in a tank for sure what you'll find is that there is this overflow pipe now it acts for two reasons first of all you've got your filler okay which will fill the actual tank itself but if you overfill it obviously you've got this overflow pipe and the excess water will come out of it but it does another thing what it does is it acts as a vent if you keep pulling water from a sealed tank you're going to create a vacuum it's not going to suck the sides of the the tank in but what it will do is it will just the water will 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 um, fall down to a halt and you'll not get any more water through so the air this vent allows air to come in replaces the water going out now this is a bit of a problem for us because what we're doing is we're building compressed air to 15 PSI into the system and we want that pressure to build to 15 to, and, and open a tap and push that water out. However, if you have a vent, what's going to happen is the air is going to come in here and yes, it'll go to the right, but it could also go to the left. Now going to the left, what it will do is it will go into this tank and it will escape through here. So you will find that flow just continues forever. Flow really should just be going for about 15, 20 seconds at the beginning just to build up pressure. Some people um, maybe are a little bit concerned about, well, what pressure are we putting in? Is it too much for the pipe work? Will it go through the pumps and the water heater and so on? When it comes to doing the drain down, the first thing we will do is we will drain this particular water heater, but the air uh, that we're pushing in is 15 PSI. Pumps either in the tank or in the, the barrel outside or on board will operate at generally about 20 PSI. That's the, that's the norm. We're operating at 15 PSI, so the air will travel through. It doesn't matter if it's a diaphragm pump or an impeller pump, it doesn't matter. The air will just travel through in the same direction as the water and it will move on uh, to all of these parts, okay? 
Also, the air will travel through your water heater. As I say, you've, you've dumped the water out of it. First of all, you've closed the dump valve off to seal the system again. So basically, what you don't want is a hole in your balloon. And that's where this air traveling back in this direction, you could lose that. That's where this part comes in here, and that indeed is our check valve. And what that will do is we want to fit that to the left-hand side. Now, you may not need it, and when it comes to fitting flow, I will actually um, show you that by just blowing down the pipe, if it's a clear airway, then yes, you will need to use it because you can blow air through, you lose your pressure. However, what you might actually find is that you can blow through and there already is a check valve that's either built into the side of the wall um, or indeed into the side of the tank. It allows the water out, but it doesn't allow the water to come back this direction again. So you won't need that check valve. But just to let you know that you may need it or you may not need it and we'll see that later on. Okay, let me just clean this drawing up a wee second because there is another type of, and you'll mainly find it in some uh, touring caravans. You've got this single water coming through, okay, into here. And of course you may have your pump, which is on board and it travels through. Now, you will have a split in the actual system here and there is a fork. And what you'll have here is maybe the wall of let's say and this is particular to touring caravans especially so there's your barrel outside there's your pipe coming you may not have this onboard pump you may have a submersible pump in here doesn't matter okay so you can draw from the outside or what you can do is you can draw from a tank itself okay so i'm going to take you through this uh, particular vehicle here now this is just a typical uh, touring caravan the setup is that the water connection comes in from the outside and the pipe would be out uh, in a barrel. I know that there's no pump on board, so that tells me that um, there would be a submersible pump back in uh, the barrel itself. Now, um, it's quite cramped here, so I've got my own trusty little um, uh, handy cam here uh, just to take some footage. So the first thing I want to do is take a look at this pipework. Now, the water connection is in the wall here, as you can see, and I've got a pointer here just to use. You can see the water coming through, it travels through this blue pipe, and then it connects off and branches off, as I said to you um, earlier in the layout, um, branches off to other parts of the actual uh, water system. Now, what I want to do is a couple of things. First of all, if you do have a pump on board and you are going to disconnect this pipe, because this is where we're going to fit flow. What you want to do is turn that pump off because if you disconnect the pipe, the pump will sense that there is obviously a water tap open, for example, and it will start to gush water out. Also, it doesn't do any harm to have a little bit of blue roll here or a cloth um, just to mop up um, any water that's going to come out of that pipe, you know, even so, no matter how little it is. Um, what I also want to do is disconnect one end of it because I need to find something out. Okay, so I'll just set this down a second. Well, actually, I'll show you just disconnecting this one. So what I'm going to do is just push the little flanges back, it's a push fit connection, push those back and pull that pipe out. Now, like I say, you might get a little bit of water coming out of that pipe and I'll leave a little bit of roll in there. So that's that pipe connected and obviously that's it leading up to the wall. Now I want to find something out first of all and that is, <coughs> is there a non-return valve? This is the typical, a typical connection, this is one type. Uh, and then there's there's one or two others. Typically, they just come in through the wall. You've got this little spigot that sticks out of the end. Um, and what that does is obviously a pipe would just connect uh, onto that, okay? Now, some of these particular blocks uh, in the wall will have uh, one-way traffic, one-way valves in them. Um, it'll allow water to come in, but it won't allow any water to go back out again, okay? So just like a check valve. Um, so what we want to do is ascertain if there is a check valve in that block. And the easiest way to do that is really just blow down that piece of the pipe. Now this piece, unfortunately, and this is why we don't supply these particular uh, pieces of pipework, um, because they're too short. So I've just got a, 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 a typical little piece of 12 millimeter pipe with a, you know, a connection, and I'm going to put it on there, okay? Now, I'm going to blow down this, and if I can't get my breath to blow out the side of the van, or indeed if you're using this with a, a, an RV and it's a tank, then it means that there is um, that valve in place. If I can blow through it, it's not there. So, okay, I can't actually blow through that, so that's telling me that there is a one-way valve in there. 
it means that we don't have to fit the other um, uh, 12 mil by 12 mil uh, one way valve that actually comes with flow if I can blow through it then you would have to fit that on so what I want to do just grab my camera again just to show you what we're doing um, as you can see what I want to do is I want to disconnect this pipe here from the wall now if I move that wire out of the way you can actually see that I can either remove the pipe out of this connection here okay or just like that okay or what I can actually do is if you can see it there that's just a straight connector connected onto that spigot which I can take out so let's have a look at that you've got your piece of pipe what I would do is, if you ever do change your van, what you want to do, or your boat, or your RV, or whatever it happens to be, take flow with you and put the van back to the way it was. What you can do is just simply go to shop, you can get a piece of pipe work, exactly the same length, more or less. I mean, for a piece of pipe this length, a couple of, a couple of pennies would do it. Okay, so we have our replacement. This piece here, what I would do, this original piece, I would put it in the back there and it will just stay there until such time that you want to take out this unit, bring it to somewhere else and you can put that original back. So that, that, that would be my advice. Now, okay, so we'll set that off to one side as well. That's our original piece. We're going to work with this. Now, as I said to you, there are different types of connections in the wall itself. So what you might actually find is that we can either keep that piece which was the original on there then what we want to do is obviously fit our one-way valve if we need to but we definitely need to fit this particular T. The ideal scenario would be if you have that 12 mil connection why not just fit the T on there for flow okay and then what you can do is just connect your pipe and then cut it to size and your airline is in there so obviously we're getting right to the source of the water um, and, and, and what we're doing then is we're obviously able to get rid of that water but also clean the pipework as well. So I'll show you a couple of uh, other scenarios as well. Okay, so I'll just take this piece back off again. Now, on your one way, if you, um, by the way, I'll go back to here because some of them have got a, a 12 mil fitting that is actually connected on here and, and it is permanent. Okay, so what you're going to want to do first of all is perhaps if you need to fit this one way valve. Now, you will notice an arrow on it. In this particular one, the arrow is, is going that direction. The arrow is the flow of the water, so you don't want to go the wrong way. You want to blow through it. <laughs> If I can blow through it that way, that means that the water can travel through. I can't blow through it the other way. So I want to be able to connect that on there. Now, what you want to do is use your pipe cutters. Take about, say, eh, four centimeters, five centimeters, a um, couple of inches. Uh, cut through. Now, you'll notice that it will give it quite an oval shape. Just use your finger and thumb and push that back into a nice rounded shape again. Okay, what we want to do then, obviously push that in. To there and then following making sure the arrow was going the right direction okay the arrow is pointing that way so that means my water can go that direction again you're going to want to fit the T so you will cut yourself another little piece of pipework round that off again both ends and fit it into there and then you can fit your T and of course being the original piece of pipework there, just make sure that obviously there's enough tucks up in behind, um, obviously plugs into that particular piece. So what you need is an extra piece, fit it into the end, like so, and then you can just nip it off at the length that you need it to be at. And that's you ready, just to plug that back into the system, and I'll do that in a second. So that's your original piece, throw it in the back and that's you connect it up and basically what you're trying to do is get this T to, to the start here if possible. You may need to put in this um, but you may have that uh, a connection there to work with. Now, okay, let me just take you through um, a couple of other bits and pieces here. You may have this flexible pipework and you're going to need these particular barbed connectors. Okay, what I would do is I would just soak the end of that in uh, some boiling water, soften it up, push the barb in uh, and when it um, uh, cools down again, it'll, it'll grip onto the barb. You may wish to use a Jubilee clip just to tighten a little clip up just to hold that barb in place. It's a belt and braces approach. Now, I need to show you something here on the, the, uh, the board again. Let's say you've got a motorhome, RV, 
or you have a boat. And what you're faced with is this here. You have an onboard tank and the onboard tank might be accessible from only around about here. That's as far as you can reach. That means there's quite a bit of pipe work and this could also be the case where uh, some tanks are actually under slung on the property okay and 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 the pipe comes up out of the floor but you know that there is a significant amount of pipe work you know leading to your access point that you can get onto this pipe and this is quite important because not only are we removing for frost but we're also trying to cleanse the pipes now so far we have discussed that we have this one-way valve um, that we supply with the kit itself what you might want to do is fit this particular little valve. It's just a little shut off valve and how it works is, um, let's put that behind, how it works is you simply open it and close it. Now it's a manual thing. What we're trying to do here is make flow as automated as possible. So all you need to do is switch flow on obviously and this one way valve will allow your water to travel through every day, not a problem, but obviously when it comes to air it will stop the air traveling back this way. On the other hand, you might find that, do you know what, I've got too much pipe work here and I really would like to do something with this and I know that I would like to push this water back into the tank again, okay? And this is this is quite common on, on um, RVs, motorhomes and, and, and boats itself. So what you might want to do is fit this manual piece in instead. And what you would do there, okay, instead of the one-way valve, take the one-way valve out of place. Now this is just an example piece obviously now what you want to do is use this and, and let the arrow um, guide you it, it, it doesn't really matter with these particular little uh, shut off valves Just push you back in okay so that allows the water to travel um, just every day but what you can do is manually close that off okay and what that will do is it will stop the air from traveling back now when it comes to pressurizing. What you can do here is this manual shut off, okay, you close it off when you want to drain down, okay, so there's flow. Flow is going to push all the water out following here, okay, so you would want to have your T connected at this point here. On everyday use you would have this little manual valve open, it allows water to travel through and that's no problem. Okay, when it comes to draining down, you close this little valve off, you switch flow on, okay, and the air can't go that way and it blows it out. Now, what you would do is, at the end, when you finish draining everything else, this particular piece of pipework here, what you can do is you can build up the pressure one more time and open this valve and it will shoot that water back into the tank again. And that's the way to, to drain this off. It does mean there is a, a, a manual step um, to be considered um, obviously this is a, a, a manual piece, um, but it is the best way of, of, of doing that. Now, here's the thing. Don't you just hate it whenever you buy something and then you realize that you're going to have to buy other bits and pieces, obviously, for it. That's not what we're trying to do here. In the troubleshooting section, I'll explain a little bit more about if you do have a part such as this, okay, and you realize that you do need a manual valve, um, what we'll do is we, we will exchange that for you, okay? But in the troubleshooting section, I will explain it a little bit further. Now, on that as well, what we also have is some properties you will find will have in the US and Canada, they use half inch type pipe work. Um, in the UK, we use 15 mil in Europe. Uh, it can be 12 mil, it can be 14 mil. Um, there's different types of, of uh, different sizes being used. Now, a lot of uh, marine vessels, a lot of boats, um, tend to use um, typical domestic pipework, 15 millimeter pipework. What we supply, because 99 times out of 100, you'll find that you're going to have this 12 millimeter pipework to connect this to, okay? However, we also do have this particular T in a 15 mil version and, di and different versions. If, for example, you get this T and it doesn't fit again in the troubleshooting section, I'll show you how we can actually 
um, exchange that for you um, so that you're not having to, to go and buy additional pieces because they can be expensive and of course the 15 millimeter one will work for not only copper pipe work but also um, for the uh, grey and white Hepworth pipe as well. Okay, so that's this um, simple connection. What I want to do here is just fit that back up uh, and show you um, how it works. Okay, so uh, just to, to show you um, everything that's fitted, here is our original piece. What I did do is I removed that strip because we really didn't need it. Um, and that's our original piece. So what I'm just gonna do is set it in here and that's it, it can stay there. Um, and if I ever remove flow, then fine I can um, put that back to the wet walls I have got my little handy cam here just want to show you um, how everything is fitted <clears throat> okay so just to show you it fitted again there is the little block um, and of course I have my uh, one-way valve now I know we didn't actually need this fitted but I've just done it for demonstration purposes you've got your flow T right next door to it um, and that's what you want to do is get that as close to the source as you possibly can okay and then the pipework works its way back and that is it fitted so that's just ready for the fitting flow where we'll just um, uh, push fit the uh, airline straight into there and we are good to go okay so that's the water system infrastructure dealt with and now what we want to do is bring some 12 volt DC power to the box itself now when we were developing flow we wanted convenience to be everything so we wanted the power supply if you were fitting this underneath uh, the seats or in a cupboard um, for whatever property you have we wanted to be able to, um, to be able to power um, to the box from that area as well um, so what we have here is a little diagram of what goes on uh, underneath your seats if we take in two halves left and right the left hand side you will find is generally going to be under the seats uh, somewhere and the right hand side you'll generally find is up high okay so what we wanted to do was to try and get access to the power supply down underneath the seats. And basically this is how it works. This is your uh, your battery. Uh, you can see the, the, the plus is the red and, and the minus. Your earth is the, the, the black. So you've got your live wire, which will generally come up into here, which is uh, a little fuse holder. And that fuse holder looks something similar to here. I don't have a yellow pen, so um, I've, uh, you'll find that it's a yellow fuse and it's generally set to 20 amp. You'll notice your black line also comes and there will be a connector here um, as well. The two cables that come from here and actually go up behind units and so on, which are you know nearly impossible to get access to, and they disappear up into a consumer unit. That consumer unit you will find is up on high and what it has is all of your fuses and various bits and pieces in there for the electrical uh, devices that are actually in the property. Now, although I have drawn this in as a red live and a black, earth um, to go to the consumer unit what you will find in most properties because it's the same couple of companies who make the battery boxes and so on uh, and the consumer units for for most of these properties anyway so you'll find it's the same colors and so on and so forth okay so what we have here instead of this being a red line leading up to the consumer unit what you'll have is a uh, a blue and brown wire which will be your live wire and down below coming from this connection you'll find that your earth wire instead of being black will be white uh, with a flash of orange so what we're trying to do is to get access to this point here uh, where these uh, connections are made and, and what we have done is we have developed this little T okay which is going to connect in now what the, I'll explain this more in a second but what I want to do is just to get down and show you that connection uh, as it is down there okay so it's a little bit cramped down here but I just wanted to give you a little look at the electrics here now what you'll find in the background here is this um, white plastic box that's your battery box Coming out of here, what you have is your red being your positive and your black being your negative, okay? And the red will go up into this particular fuse holder. Now this 20 amp fuse that is in here, that is your main breaker fuse for the property itself. And that's really where the battery box and its own loom, that's really where that stops. Then you have the consumer unit's loom of wires, um, and that's these two sets here, or these two here. Um, what you'll have is the live wire will come out as brown with a flash of blue on it. It's coming out of the fuse on the other side. And of course then coming out of the black, you have your white wire with the orange flash. And what that will do is go up to the consumer unit. And, and that basically sends power up uh, to the a fuse box essentially for all of your other electrical uh, equipment. To give you an idea just what we're going to do here, I just want to um, give you an example back up on the table of these wires.
Okay, so as you can see, it's a little bit cramped down here. Okay, so I've, I've made a little replica and I've brought it up onto the table here to show you. Essentially what we have here, as I said, is your uh, red cable coming from the battery and then going into the fuse unit, 20 amp fuse, and then going from there as a brown with a blue flash on it, leading to the consumer unit. Indeed, you have your earth coming through as black, which then goes through as the orange and white, again, leading through, and they do have these little connections. Now, what we're trying to do is to piggyback uh, off those, okay? And so what we have uh, developed is this little T here. And essentially what we're going to do is to break it into the two halves. What we want, and just to explain the T itself, you have a red and a black, so plus and minus, and the red leads down into a, a, a single connection, and another red comes out of it and back up again, okay? So the idea is, and it's the same with the black, the idea is, is that we can fit this in between very, very simply. And what happens is the part comes from the battery, leads down into the connection, which will lead, of course, onto flow, comes back up and then uh, leads out the other direction and leads on to the consumer unit. Now, you will notice that there is a significant difference in the thickness of the cables here. And that's because from the rest of flow and that's because the what we're trying to do is make sure that we're the the cables are thick enough to carry the power to to operate all of the other uh, electronic devices now what we want to do is very very straightforward is take the consumer unit out and what i've done here is made sure that i've actually um it looks as if and this will happen and, and you would panic slightly if i don't if i don't explain it to you that you think you've broken the fuse holder, okay? Because what happens is, is the little silver clip, I'm not sure if you can see that, okay, my hand in the background there, and um, you can see the little uh, clip. Now, if you go to pull that out, it can be quite difficult, um, and it can be sharp in your fingers. What you want to do, you haven't broken it, by the way, um, it's designed to happen. Um, when you're trying to separate those, little piece of cloth around and just pull that out. You don't need to use pliers and so on. Um, they might be a little bit sore just on the components, but simply what you want to do is just slip that back up inside and it fits over the prong. And to show you it from the other side, if I take the fuse out, okay, those two little teeth are in there um, for the fuse to slip into. So if you need to, take the fuse out, pop it back up in, and put the fuse cover back on again. Okay, so that's the first one done. Next thing you'll find is the earth uh, cable has got a male uh, and a female connection. Um, they just simply push together, okay? And we're gonna separate those as well. Now, so the next thing we want to do is to fit our T. Now the T has been um, <coughs> configured so that to marry up, we have got the males and the females. So you really can't go wrong here. Now, what we're going to do is just switch that around because what I want to do is fit, and I can see here, it's a little male type connection, which is going to fit into the bottom of the fuse holder. Okay, like so. Okay, we can just get it through. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's done. And the next thing I want to do is obviously connect it to uh, the earth as well. Now, we have got a female side on here, and so that's not gonna fit on that female. As I say, you can't really go wrong with this, but there is a male version. So that's the male into the female, and that's it sorted. Okay, so that's that side done. Okay, so we've got our live, okay. She's heading down here, and we have our earth connected as well. So what we want to do then, is obviously take the live going off to the consumer unit, simply snap that together, okay? And then we do the same thing with the earth. And again, it should just plug in nice and simply like that. So what you've got is coming from your battery box, cable coming in, goes down to supply uh, power to flow, and then disappears off um, up to the consumer unit. And as I say, the cables are heavy enough to, to carry whatever power you're putting through. Very convenient, very, very straightforward. Most importantly, as I mentioned to you before, if you did want to take flow with you onto your next property, you simply just take those cables apart and you put them uh, back to the way they were and it's as if flow never existed. And again, you're free then to use that T somewhere else. Now, 99 times out of 100, you will find that this is the case. If you find that you don't have, and, and, and some of these, you f may find that a boot is missing. Um, and by a boot, I mean the little plastic housing. What you'll find is in, in your particular loom, that it is just a spade um, and, and really just 
clip that in um, <clears throat> and if, if necessary and if you really wanted to put a little bit of insulating tape around it if you feel that you need to um, but these things are, are, are generally set up to not need uh, tape or anything like that um, on, on most properties. If you find as well that you don't um, have these particular boots as connectors um, what you may have to do then is is make your own and, and what I would suggest is that you get the little spades basically just take our particular cabling uh, down to um, a, a local auto parts, uh, auto electrics or um, one of the electronic stores and just get the little spades or blades that suit these um, just clip the cable and fit uh, those those onto it uh, you know that makes life an awful lot easier um, these particular little block connectors you know there's so many different connectors out there that you can use that bite into the cable and so on and you know what some of them you find um, they, they don't bite in hard enough and they and they present you with problems and so on it's quite common particularly in the caravan RV industry um, and indeed marine um, but you know sometimes the old ones are the best ones um, so the block connectors are still good you just basically strip the end of the wire connect it up tighten it into place uh, and away you go now that's just to get a connection um, what you're going to find uh, is that once you get your connection then you've got this four meter uh, piece of cable which is just going to connect onto the end there and of course it comes with its own 15 amp fuse if you find that you don't want to break into your electrics um, in, in this sort of way and like I say the whole idea is, is for it to be convenient for you um, what you can actually do on the four meter piece is you can actually cut off the end uh, of the cabling make sure though that you do keep this fuse in place because if something were to happen to flow as with any electrical device the first thing to blow would be that fuse on the line and it means that it's not going to blow your main fuse so whatever you're going to do to the cable make sure you keep make sure you keep that uh, fuse in place but what you could do is have the cable and at the other end just say well look I can connect on to to flow onto the box this way and put on a, a cigarette lighter uh, type connector um, and you can use that and of course what you can do is again auto parts stores and so on you can buy these connectors um, and they're, they're you know a, a couple of pound uh, to buy those so what I want to do is to um, get this T down and get it fitted to the loom okay so what I want to do is get our little T um, connected here so what I'm interested in is the red line for now and the blue. So the red's traveling into the breaker. So I want to have RT fitted um, on, on the caravan or the boat or RV side of the, the main breaker fuse. That's the 20 amp fuse. So what I'm interested in removing here is the actual uh, brown wire with the blue flash in it. So you might hear a few beeps and so on. The one first thing you want to do is make sure you turn off the, the, the power um, uh, in the vehicle itself but you'll still probably hear a few beeps going on so what we can do is just disconnect that now just something i'm noticing there is that this little boot is actually quite loose that's okay that's all right um because they will they will still connect together what you're wanting is to connect the little spade and blade inside what you'll find as well is when you're uh, sometimes you can end up disconnecting other parts to it just make sure you get that fitted back in and in fact those little silver um uh blades sticking out there uh, what they're doing is and they can actually pull out on you as well you haven't broken them you can just push them back up and they grip the, this fuse here this main fuse okay so you just pop them back up into place where they came from okay everything just snaps together okay now that I'm uh, what I want to do is I want to fit I don't want to take apart the um, uh, the earth I can take it apart just to show you but it I noticed that there's not the, the plastic boots aren't on this particular cable by keeping this particular cable or this little spade and blade covered that means I'm not going to be touching any other live um, wires and and, um, um, and popping a fuse so what I want to do here is obviously just get the first red wire it's just the same shape as the little boot as you can see there for the brown and blue okay so the first red one pull the rest of them back and just pop that up into place and that's it that's it connected what you want to do then just to finish the circuit is to go across to the other one which is the female connection here for the brown and blue and the red because you're dealing with live first of all okay and we want to just you'll hear the beeps going off there 
And that's it, that's the connection made with the life. Now, what I can do is I can uh, work with the earth. So, again, I just take them apart. And what I'm looking for here, if you end up and you say, well, look, okay, I've got this little flat part here, which is the blade. Look inside the little boot here for the earth. You'll see that there's little circles around it. Um, this is the spade part to it. And all really you're doing is you're just connecting up there. Now you won't hear any beeps on this one because what we've done is we've disconnected and taken away the white and the orange, okay? And what we want to do is complete the circuit um, and you'll hear the beeps. And there you go, that's, that's your live. So what has happened here? So the live has traveled up through into the main breaker switch. Okay, it has now traveled down the, uh, the um, of course, the earth as well. So the um, live and the earth is traveling down into this connection, which is gonna give us power to flow. It has traveled back out of there again, and it's just continuing the circuit onto the consumer unit as well. Nice and neat and tidy, uh, and very convenient for you to connect on to flow. Right, so we've got the T fitted. Brings me on now to the four meter connection. Now, as I said to you before, there is uh, a fuse on here. So even though the T itself will actually fit straight directly into there, please don't use that because we want you to use this particular fuse in here. Now we've given you four meters because as I said earlier on, um, what you can do is you, you may place the box over there, but your power is over here, that kind of way. Um, but it also means that if you just keep it coiled up, um, you're free to be able to take it on to the next property. Okay, so the four meter cable will just connect straight in. You can't get it wrong. There only is one way to do that and it just snaps into place like so. Uh, the other end of this uh, will fit um, into the T, which is uh, fitted to the loom. Now. You fit your box, and, and if the box is convenient wherever you have it placed, then you're free to use the switch up on top, okay? Just the on-off switch. Now, what you'll find is that sometimes you want to get this box put away into a bulkhead or the back of a cupboard or somewhere out of the way, um, because as we said, you know, uh, space is a premium. So what we've also supplied you with here is a little inline switch. So once you get flow fitted, uh, you, and you've got your, your airline connected up, so you know that's taken care of. You've got your cable connected, you've got this uh, um, all uh, tied back up again. Um, what you may think is, okay, well, is there somewhere convenient where, where I could put a switch? Don't, do, don't use the switch until you find that convenient place and you can get your cable to go to it. But like I say, this is just a desk job um, to show you at the moment. The switch will come to you with the lid loose okay and what you will find inside is that this little part here comes out very very straightforward what you want to do is wherever there's going to be the convenient place what you do is basically just cut through um, halfway through uh, one of the wires not both of the wires okay just snip through one of the wires and when you snip through just pull the wire back okay just just you know um, a few centimeters uh, an inch or two okay and then what you want to do then is bear the wires what you will find is that that one of those wires one you bear the the ends place it inside there's little metal grooves there okay place it in and just crimp it with um, a pair of pliers and the other end of the wire same thing just crimp it uh, back in now when you put the cable in let the uncut, the one that you haven't cut through, let it travel underneath in here, okay? And the piece, now it'll be awkward, um, but let it travel straight through there and hold this piece up out of the way with the crimped ends, place it back in there. And once you're happy, and what I would do is I would set the lid over it just for safety um, and just use the switch and see if the box actually works okay. Once you're happy with that, then just um, press hard down on these two sides and, 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 and that will be a solid job for you. What you can then do is we've made sure that these particular switches have got flat bottoms. You can use a little bit of double-sided uh, sticky foam and you can stick it to the side of the wall, tuck it down behind a cupboard. And of course the idea is, is that you simply, when you want to drain down, you simply pull open a cupboard underneath the seat and the switch is at the side. You can just flick it on. Now, what you would do is you would just make sure that you leave the box in the on position so that that switch 
can operate on and off. Um, but this will always be on and it means that you operate then from a remote switch. So um, let's get those uh, the 4 meter cable and the switch fitted. Okay, so we have our T fitted here, okay. So what my intention is, is to later on fit flow and fitting section um, up against this wall. So I've taken the liberty of moving this motor mover just forward, taking the screws out of either side of it. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do, having flow being here, what I want to do is make it that I can open this cupboard underneath. I don't want to have to lift this seat all the time. Um, to actually uh, to, to operate flow. Um, but if I put flow up underneath here, as you can see, I'm gonna to have to open the seat um, and, and then it's gonna be difficult for me to get access to the on off switch. Um, it's just this particular layout. So what I'm going to do is gonna plug in the cable here. It's the four meter long cable and then dress it around underneath flow here, bring it around the right hand side and there's a little front door just here. And what I want to do is just to be able, to, when I want to drain down, pull down that front door and obviously get access to a switch over here in the right hand side. So the first thing we want to do really is just, this is your cable and you can't go wrong, just snap the two together, okay, like so. And then what I want to do, I'll need to undo this cable a bit and, and bring it around the right side. And then what I want to do is fit my little switch here. So we'll get on with that now. Okay, so um, we've got the, the um, T connected here. We've got our cable connected onto it. And just so that you can see, we've got our fuse fitted here. Okay, quite important to have that. Um, what I've also done is I've taken the coil itself and I've just rolled it up and I've tucked it into the corner here. Um, it's doing no harm sitting over there. And what we have got is the other end of the coil uh, coming out of here, which is going to plug into uh, the, the cable of flow, as I say, when we fit the flow box onto here. Okay, so that's in place. Um, what we've also got in <coughs> is I brought a loop of cable in behind here, okay? Um, and I've brought it just up underneath into this particular online switch, back through, and then of course it comes out at this end here. So when I want to operate flow, I don't have to lift the seats. I don't have to get my hand up underneath here. All I need to do is there's a little door here at the front. I just have to reach my hand through, switch it on, switch it off, and that's it. Okay, so that's the airline T connected and of course the electrics T connected. We've also put in the four meter extension cable and a convenient location for the switch itself. Um, so that brings us into the next chapter, which is fitting flow, where we just need to get flow mounted to the wall. And obviously it should be really plug and play to get the airline in and obviously just connect up the power uh, to flow itself. So we'll see you in the next chapter.